So, in case you guys didn't know, we had church camp last week, and if you wasn't there, I'm sorry, because God was there, right? Uh, we had several rededicate their lives or ask Jesus into their lives, and uh, if y'all can't clap about that, I don't even know why you showed up. So, sorry if my voice is just a little off. It's a lot of screaming with kids and at kids. Uh, this is my first camp not being a camper, and so it was quite the, uh, the undertaking, but, but God was there, like I said, and, uh, it was just an amazing, an amazing time. I know leaders got just as much out of it as these kids did, uh, and we got a few people that, that got some stuff from God, and, uh, that's always a great thing callings were uh given out and uh and and gifts were were given out and um it was just a an eye-opening experience to be able to see it from this side you know i i've i've been at camp and i've been a camper and and, and i've known god has moved it, at camp and uh and can feel that but to, just to see it in in other kids lives and, and just see uh people ministering to one another that are you know 12 years old or 18 years old um it, it was just a it was just a great time and uh and none of that would be possible without those of you that that gave towards that and uh just give your guys a hand clap right now on that that we really we really appreciate this is a very very giving church a very giving community and uh without any of that none of this would be possible um so without further ado one of these boys I don't know if they're going to play. Yeah, Wes. Wes, yeah. So, first off, I'm not, I'm Wesley, if you didn't know me. And uh, just making that clear. And uh, I'm not used to speaking in front of large crowds or a crowd. And uh, anyways, church camp was great. You know, off to the other side. My team did win. <laughs> Even though John White tried to rig it to where we couldn't win. Well, we still won. And uh, <laughs> church camp was amazing. You know, it's a great place to go make new friends, you know, meet new people and come closer with our ultimate father, Jesus Christ. And uh, I think it was Thursday night. We spent about an hour and 30 minutes just doing praise and worship. And, uh, you know, if you just look around, there's plenty of kids just sobbing and weeping you can see that the holy spirit is just moving through them and i remember walking up to the dorm that night and uh some kid was walking next to me and all of a sudden he just bursted out in sobbing tears and he just said you just get this feeling that you just can't help it and i told him that that's the holy spirit moving within you and what i got out of church camp was that you see god moving in all these ways that it's amazing to see it, and uh, I mean that's about all I got. Uh, my name is John Baker. For those that don't know me, um, <laughs> go pink team, go pink. Um, not too comfortable up here, but church camp was awesome, and it was awesome to see many walls be broken, and praise and worship was phenomenal. That group from Cornerstone, and um, it's just awesome to see the way God moved and, and how people came to Christ that week. It was one of the best years I've ever like been to camp. It was, it was a good time. M many new friends, too. Okay, so mine's a little bit longer, um, but a lot of you guys, or some of you guys might know that I do not like staying places. That's a big struggle for me, a big battle. I don't like staying the night anywhere without my mom and dad. Um, so I got asked from John, Pastor John, to if I would be a lifeguard, and I was like, yeah, I can lifeguard. Didn't think anything about 
like coming to camp because I didn't want to go. My plan wasn't going. Um, and I didn't like have faith about going at all. And the night that I started thinking about like, all right, I'm going to camp. I need to, God is going to move. I'm going to have to get a better attitude about it. And which I did. And the first night passed and I done all right. I, I kind of struggled with it, but I was like, all right, had a better attitude. I'm like, my faith is going to build up. And then a little bit later, Will Maxwell had preached about um, being stuck in the middle. And that really got to me because that's where I was. I was stuck in the middle. And I didn't really know what to do. And I was like, that was me. And then later that night, I knew the um, that God was trying to move in my heart and the devil knew that and he was trying to tear me down and I had a breakdown and I was crying and I wanted to go home and I wanted my mom and uh, I went to Mandy and Mandy had talked to me and she's like you got to fight your battles because that's one of my biggest battles is staying away from my parents and I cried and she's like how about you call your mom. So I called my mom and talked to my mom. My mom's like, if you want to go home on the next tomorrow, the next day, then you can. And I was like, okay. But then right after she said that, God had just like touched my heart and said, you can't go home. Something is going to happen. And I was like, I was like, okay. And I told my mom, like, don't come and pick me up tomorrow. I don't want to go home. And she's like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. And, um, so the next day, we uh, we were talking, we were praising worship, and I was praising the Lord, and we were talking about our walls being broken, and I was just worshiping, and I'm like, all right, God, you're going to move in my heart tonight, and I had a little girl come up to me, and she just started latched on, and she cried on to me, and she was just like, can you pray with me? Can and I was like, yeah, and so I went to the back and we prayed together, and I showed her, I talked to her about what she had been going through. I prayed with her and I told her that you gotta fight your battle and everything is gonna be okay. Right. And later that night she came up to me and she was like, so she told me she was like, she said thank you, and then the next day, um, I got a letter she had wrote for me. And she said that I was one of her biggest role models ever. And it really got to me because I know God is moving in me to be a leader. And um, I didn't see that like a lot of other people probably did. And But this camp has probably been one of the best I've ever been to because my heart was changed. I fought my battles, and I have the heart of a champion. So. Thank you, thank you. That's probably the hardest thing them three people have ever had to do. So uh, I'm I'm very proud of them, and I'm proud of all the kids that that made strides there. So um, without further ado, <laughs> let's go uh, go to the Lord and praise and worship. Yes, uh, we have an update. Emma uh, was in an accident on her way to church, but uh, she's okay. Uh, her mom just texted and said that she hit some water and um, hydroplane, spun around a few times and landed in the ditch. But the Lord was with her because uh, she missed a culvert by about a half an inch. So uh, thank you, God, for watching out for her. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are Jesus the healer, that you love us and you care for us. And right now, I pray for Fern. I pray, God, that you will touch her physical body, Lord, that the word of God will go through her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, healing every area. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we know that you're here. Holy Spirit, you're here. We welcome you here. We welcome you here. Amen. David and I have been talking about wildfire, about just having the fire in our hearts and just having fire 
um, the fire of the Holy Spirit. And uh, David's dad used to say, well, you don't have to worry about any wildfire. Usually there's enough wet blankets, you know, to put it out. Um, and I said, well, you know, sometimes they're, they're a fire extinguisher. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, don't quench the spirit. And that word quench in the original means extinguish or suppress, put out. And so we always think about it in a church service, don't quench the Holy Spirit. And yes, that's true. But don't quench the Holy Spirit in your own life. There's a fire, if there's a, a yearning, a burning that's starting to rise up, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't suppress Him. Don't extinguish that fire that He's wanting to burn deep within you. Thank you, Father. Your presence, Lord. Sing, there's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. Oh, I've tasted. Mm. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free. My shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Overcome us, overcome us with your presence, Lord. Your Make it a cry of your Let heart to the Lord. 
Let us Moment. become more aware of your, of your presence. Let us, Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Oh. Let, us Let us become more aware, aware of, your of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your Holy goodness. Spirit. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your just see with our spiritual eyes, we would see that the Holy Spirit is breathing on us. God is breathing His breath of life on us. I need it. I want it. In first service, while Danny was speaking, I felt someone tap me on the shoulder, and I turned around expecting to see Jim or, or Bev needing something. But it wasn't either one of them. It was the Lord tapping me on the shoulder. He wants our attention this morning. He wants our attention. He deserves our attention. He's worthy of our attention. And I believe he's asking us, what do you want? What do you need? What is it you're looking for? Who are you looking for? Jesus. As you're looking into our hearts, you know the very thoughts and the intents of our hearts. As you're looking, as you're looking, let us reach out for you. You're here, Jesus. You're here.
evidence is all, all around us, all around us, that the Spirit of the Lord is here, overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love, your love, surround strong in my weakness that's when I'm strong because of the power of the living God that lives and dwells within me spirit of God fall fresh on us we need we need your presence your kingdom come your will be done this morning Spirit don't wait don't God, hurt through the whole service don't us. we need your prayer cry out to Jesus the healer come on up your we'll pray for you come. we'll pray for you your right there don't go through the service here as in heaven Spirit, Spirit of God of God Fall fresh on us. us. We, we need, need your, presence. your presence. And your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. In heaven. Here as in heaven. Everyone is healed and made whole. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Don't go through this service hurting physically or spiritually, mentally. He wants to make us whole, whole in every area of our lives. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. Your kingdom come, your will be done here as in Fall fresh, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Your kingdom come. Your will. 
just deliver a message from God. He is the message. Amen. And he's been doing miracles from the time of his conception to his death and then him living again. Still working. The glory of God is still working in our lives. Still still as we sing this next song word of God speak just ask the Lord to speak to your heart maybe you're needing a message maybe you're needing maybe you're needing an answer about something maybe you need some direction maybe you need your path your path lit just ask him to speak to your heart He's faithful. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear. What you would say, word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place, please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God speak. I'm finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, oh, beyond the noise. All that I need, All I need is to be to with be you. And in the, quiet, in the quiet, I hear your voice, word of God speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest. In your holiness, word of God speak. Would you pour down like rain? 
washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness word of god speak i'm finding myself at a loss for words and the funny thing is it's okay it's okay it's okay it's okay just for, for just a moment let's just be still before the lord so we can hear his voice just be still for a moment to deep, the deep part that's in our hearts that only he knows about cries out what's deep in me only you know come walk with me come walk with me speak to my heart What's deep in me? I'll do you know. know what I'm to say. Father's heart this morning is calling deep to you. The Father's heart is calling to you.
and the more I find you, the more I love you. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe and feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. The more I speak you, all the more I find you. The more Uh, Thank you, God. Do you ever find yourself, Thank you, God. as the days go on and the years go on, it, here's, here, here's some of my situation. I have unrealistic expectations of what I can get done in a day. I do. And you start at daylight, and something that should have taken you an hour, you're done with it at noon. And I, I, I have these feelings constantly of being overwhelmed. There's too much work. There's too much to do. I've got too much to pay back. I just want to quit and drive off. I just want to quit. Just wash my hands of it and just walk away. Now, some of you are overwhelmed this morning. You're overwhelmed. You don't even know what to do. You don't know how to do it. You don't know where to go. You don't know who to talk to. You don't know whether to go right, left, jump, sit, sleep, wake up. You don't know what to do. And see, being overwhelmed is okay. In the right spot, church. I've got these little girls. And I mean to tell you this. They can take a perfectly clean house. And it's like you set off an atomic bomb in a few seconds. It can go from perfect to destroyed in just a matter of sheer moments. And 
what we are trying to do, I heard Dave Ramsey say this on the radio one day, is trying to raise good adults, not good kids. And I don't want them to struggle with being overwhelmed like I do. So I try to help them. Because, see, they need to learn that they need to clean up their own stuff. That's, in my book, that's pretty good parenting. Pat me on the back. You need to clean. I don't care who made the mess. Well, and they're overwhelmed with it. So I just tell them, you just start over here with one thing. Start with this. Just start with the shoes. There's 42 of them in here. Just start with the shoes. So start carrying your shoes. I'll help you. See, and the other day we were having these very conversations at our house. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, you need to be overwhelmed by me. You need to be overwhelmed by me. Not overwhelmed with the things of the world. Because the Bible says to seek first the kingdom and everything else will be added unto you. See, be overwhelmed. I think about times in my life when I was overwhelmed by the love of God or the peace of God or the love. I remember thinking back about this, this image is in my mind of the fire station in October, this last October. And the community had a benefit for Jeff and Bree. And there was a lot of work and toil that went into that. And, and I'll just be honest, worry on my part. Worry. And when we were setting up chairs doing that stuff, I had this worry in my heart. We've done all this. We've got all this stuff. But now we need people to show up. <laughs> and I'll never forget this as long as I live. I was up there working on something. And I turned around and I looked. And that fire station was chunked full. And they were lined up out in the street. And I was overwhelmed by the love of God. I'll never forget that. Overwhelmed by it. See, now listen. God's going to overwhelm you with some things in a good way. And you need to put that in your memory. You need to put that in your heart. And you need to draw back on that. You need to draw back on that. Because see, David told this to King Saul. He said, the same God that delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear deliver me from this giant. What giant are you facing right now? God hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't given you more than you can bear. He's given you every tool you need to complete the job that he wants you to do. Be overwhelmed in God's presence and God's spirit. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are, Lord. We thank you, God. Lord, that sometimes, Lord, we want to quit. We just want to wash our hands and walk off, drive off, Lord. Lord, but I thank you, Lord, that you never want to quit on us, Lord. That, that you don't want, Jesus, you even said, if there's any way, if there's another way we can do this, I'm up for it. But if there's no other way, God, it's your will and not mine. Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, that, that you don't quit on us. Father God, Danny said in first service, Lord, that, that Jesus Christ is our lawyer. He's pleading our case to God the Father. And he said, he's an awesome lawyer, and you don't get any bills in the mail. That's already been paid for. Thank you, God, that, Lord, that you are everything we need you to be. Father God, you are the great I am, Father God, that, Lord, whatever situation we're in is not above you, Lord. Circumstances are below our faith. Us as you come, Father God, I pray that these dollars and cents, Lord, will go to raise up your kingdom, to glorify your name, Lord, and add names to your book of life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing, you are my supply, my breath of life, still more awesome than I know. Amen. You are my supply, my breath of life, still more awesome than I know. You are my reward, worth living for, still more awesome than I know. All of you is more than enough for all of me. Every need you satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is 
seated, look over at your neighbor and tell them don't be so disagreeable. We'll just jump right into it right off the bat. Okay, Bob's class dismissed to go down and teens, what a wonderful teen camp. You guys are dismissed across the street. Wonderful. Thank you, John and Wes and Hannah for testimonies. That was some good stuff. That's uh that's uh, three uh, young people you don't normally have uh, a whole lot of trouble with them wanting to steal the stage. Just, just, just saying. All right. 